You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities, and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. At dollarseed.com, all of our seeds are only a dollar a pack. And we have online resources that teach you all about the rewarding hobby of growing your own plants, flowers, herbs, and vegetables. Imagine the joy you'll feel when your children actually help you harvest your first garden crop. Or the pride of knowing you'll never need a florist again. Visit dollarseed.com and grow a little magic of your own for just a dollar. dollarseed.com. What could be healthier? Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another incredible episode of Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart Radio. And I'm your host, Dini. We have a very special guest for you guys, so you definitely want to stick around for that. And as a matter of fact, text your buddies, family members, or even share it on social media right now and let them know that we are about to dive deep into another interview. Before I bring my guest on, I do want to say that you have to believe in it. He's like, what are you talking about, Dini? So um, do you truly believe in the value of your own pursuits? If so, there's not much that will be able to stop you. And if not, why are you wasting your precious time on them? Belief in what you're doing um, will make you vastly more enthusiastic, resourceful, and effective. It will let you see valuable opportunities where others just see annoying problems. Your belief will enable you to persevere through the difficult times and grow stronger in the face of challenges. Perhaps you think that, you know, doing what you believe in is a luxury that you cannot afford. After all, the bills have to be paid, you know. You know, how how much time do you waste on dreams and goals and ambitions, right? (laughs) But, you know, yes, indeed, the bills must be paid. And the very best way to do that is by putting your efforts where they will create the most value. If you don't believe in what you're doing at the moment... Then map out a plan that will take you from where you are right now to where you can truly believe in what you're doing. Once you make that connection, even though nothing else has changed, you've suddenly added the power of belief to your efforts. So believe in what you're doing. Believe in where you're going. You can find a way. Find it. Hold on to it and be unstoppable. Take that from me, Coach Dini. That is my word, and word is bond. Have you struggled budgeting your finances? Don't worry, you're not alone. Humbledbudget.com, that's H-U-M-B-L-E-D-B-U-D-G-E-T.com is the help and resource you've been searching for. Humbledbudget.com is a personal finance and educational website with a great variety of topics when it comes to budgeting, taxes, investing, and the popular topic of FIRE, financial independence, retire early. Humbledbudget.com has a goal, and that's to help you reach your financial dreams, no matter what your goals are when it comes to finances. It doesn't matter where you start, where you come from, or where you are right now. Humbledbudget.com can help. What are you waiting for? Take that first step to the financial life you've dreamed of and go to humbledbudget.com. That's H U M B L E D B U D G E T. Humbledbudget.com. Hey, what's up, guys? Again. Welcome to the show. You're listening to VRL. That's Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart Radio. And I'm your host, Dini. 
Our interviews are designed to go beyond music, news, books, art, acting, films, technology, education, entrepreneurship, entertainment, and sometimes even past that thing that we call the ego. Our interviews are designed to go behind the scenes and into the minds of these incredible human beings. You know, the ones who are out there giving it their all for me, for you. And for the world, I want to welcome you guys to our special interview episode. Yeah, this morning we have the remarkable entrepreneur Jasmine Tate. She's joining us today. Her story of starting a cleaning business from scratch, facing hardships, and eventually achieving incredible success is truly inspiring. And we are excited to dive into her journey, learn from her experiences, and discover how she's helping others thrive in the cleaning industry. All right, let's go ahead and welcome her to the show. Jasmine, thank you for being here. Hello, good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to finally get on with you. Absolutely. You have your cup of coffee, Red Bull? I do. Monster. Well, I have some tea this morning, so like I'm all amped. <laughs> okay. All right, I like the tea. Uh, not yeah. too many people say that. I'm a tea drinker as well. Yes, love it. Yes, yes, indeed. So, yeah, we are excited to have you here. But before we get into your why and the how, let's discuss the who. So give us a brief look into your beginnings. Oh, who am I? I am a seeker. <laughs> I am a seeker. Um, it's, it's uh, You know, I get always stopped up when I get asked that question. For some reason, I just came out just so fast. And I think it was inspired by your beginning intro about the believe. Um, because I am a seeker of the things that bring me purpose, that brings me joy. I am a mother. Um, I have three beautiful sons that I just love and adore. I'm so blessed to be able to be their mom. Um, I am a wife. Um, I am a servant in my local assembly with my church to be able to serve my community. Um, and I am a business owner. I love being an entrepreneur. <laughs> like, that is the thing that I just find so much, like, pure joy in. Um, it allows me to keep going no matter how crazy things look. <laughs> so... Um, I guess that would sum me up as who who I am. I am Jasmine Tate's um, all those things and multiplying times 10. <laughs> Absolutely. You have it going on. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Extremely busy. All right, all right. So I want to talk about your journey. Um, so your journey began with losing everything. Well, I won't say began with losing everything, but at some point you lost everything. Uh, to build in a thriving cleaning business that's truly remarkable um can you share a yeah. bit about your uh, about the challenges that you faced early on and uh, how you managed to turn things around and achieve such impressive success you know um I've been an entrepreneur for for a very long time uh, I feel like I've always had that entrepreneurial spirit within me um, and I can't just credit this decade to the level of success that I've, I've accomplished. Um, I have to also think about all of the failed, <laughs> the failed uh, ventures that I, that I attempted, the way those things had filled me up. I feel like it all prepared me for this moment. Um, I was sharing with somebody and they, they had asked a very similar question and they were just starting. And I was just telling them like, just don't stop. And I just think about everything that I tried and failed, the most pivotal moment in everything was always my get up. Um, and I felt like that prepared me for this because this was like, I, in the moment, in that particular moment, uh, I felt like that was like the lowest of lows. Um, that I, I felt like I, if I, I couldn't go no lower. <laughs> yeah. And in that moment of when, you know, I'm walking up the stairs to my apartment with my newborn on my arm in that heavy car seat and I see that pink eviction notice on my door, I just, like, I never felt so alone. You know, I've been to those movies, like, they, they blink their eyes and they open and everything is gone. That's exactly what I felt like in that moment. I felt like everything was stripped away from me um and in the midst of that still trying to figure things out you know I'm a wife I'm a mom like I'm a woman like that's what we do <laughs> and out of all of my efforts I 
to not figure out what to do. Um, and we face that, you know, that horrible situation, even though now when I look at it, I feel like it was the turning point And I feel like, you know, it was the best situation because it was that that birthed my business. Um, but, you know, just being in that moment to where I, I, I'm losing everything, all of the possessions that I thought had value, you know, the, the vehicles, the, the houses, anything that we didn't have enough space to carry out of the home was, was gone. Um, and that was like the pivotal moment where I'm like, okay, God, like, what, am, like what, what is my next? <laughs> I can no longer look back because the things are gone. I, there's nothing I can do to get them back. I don't have the funds or finances to, you know, acquire them back. Like, what is my next? And that part right there in me that decided to look forward versus looking back was the lesson that I learned from the past because I never knew how to take a hit and keep on ticket, right? Mm -hmm. I never knew how to be able to adjust to a pivot with grace because, you know, it was all the frustrating moments that developed that area in my life to be able to be at that turning point. Like, what is my next? Um, and I just remember just in my living room in, or in my mom's living room, all my families in that back one bedroom, all six of us was asleep, all five of us was asleep. And I just went out to my living room, like break of dawn, super quiet. And I was just crying and praying. And God literally was like, you need to start a business. And I'm like, well, I tried that. I did that. I came from the nine to five after the business failed. And you tell me to start another business? Like, I don't have no money. I don't have nothing to my name. And he was like, use your hands, clean, like start a cleaning business. You need to start something that you're able to receive payment from first before having to provide service. And that was that moment. And because I am a speaker, I hit the YouTube university and the Google streets. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I found out everything that I could and I hit the road. Wow. Very resourceful. So I have a very um personal question uh about you know losing everything i've been there like three or four times um hitting mm -hmm. rock bottom mm -hmm. and you know the first time it was a shock you know i was going through yeah. the divorce you know i didn't have my kids and then you come home and there's a notice on the door that said hey we're taking everything you yeah know? and it's like at that moment your, your heart sinks you're like oh no i don't know if you want to shake your fist to god or shake your fist to yourself or just you know right just implode but after that, you know, of course I survived and it's like, yeah, I'm still alive. Um, I mm -hmm. still have opportunity to create something. And, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, like I said, I hit rock bottom three or four times, but, uh, in your case, how long did it take you to pull yourself out of the, uh, out of the rubble to start, re to oh. start to rebuild? Not long. Um, it felt like forever in the midst, you know, everything feels super long, um, but not long. Um, like I said, I was, we were luckily able to move in with my parents. They had a very small two bedroom, one bath apartment that seven of us shared. And, um, and I just knew that I needed to get my family out of this. Like I had just had my youngest son at the time and I just knew I needed to figure out a way to contribute to my family's financial needs. And my husband was out in West Texas trying to make it in trucking. Um, and like I said, it, it, it wasn't long, even though in the midst of it felt like forever, it wasn't long. When I, when I had that, um, idea and I started putting all the plans in place, I probably like actually went out there. I'm also like, uh, a sink or swim person too. Like, you know, I didn't spend too long in that research phase that sometimes we tend to do. Um, so not, not maybe long, maybe two weeks, I would say 14 days. And um, I grabbed my mom's mop broom. I went to the dollar store. <laughs> I bought some cleaning supplies um, and I went to work. I, I think the most shocker was how fast it did take off because I, I didn't even really know that people paid money to get their homes clean. I never witnessed that with my own eyes. I've always witnessed my parents and my family members and me cleaning up the house as a kid. So I didn't really know how fast it would take financially. I just knew that this was the idea and I'm going to do it. I, I had enough trust to know that God is going to give me an idea that's going to be fruitful um, because he's done it before. 
and I just went to work and I, I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew how to clean, right? I didn't know like all the logistics and the business part of it. And I just went to clean and I cleaned endlessly two to three houses every single day. I didn't turn down a client. <laughs> I had my kit in the trunk. So that way if I was out and somebody called, I'm like, oh, I can be there in 15 minutes. Hmm. Um, and within that first month, we I probably did like a little over 8K, almost close to 10K. And I remember calling my husband because he's still out in Texas, West Texas. And I was like, honey, like, I think we have enough to like get back on our feet. And he was like, with you cleaning? I'm like, yes. I think it was more of a shock to him to know like how much I actually made cleaning homes. Um, and then from that month, I, I worked endlessly like that for another month. And then we were able to move into a new home. Um, and get out wow. of my parents' house. Yeah. That is incredible and so resourceful. Um, so faith often plays a significant role in personal and professional journeys. How has your yes. faith influenced your entrepreneurial journey and helped you navigate through the dark times to reach where you are today? Oh, my goodness. It's been an endless journey. Um, and I say in this, I'm sure you can very relate that it, it's never ending. We're always stretched in ways and I'm currently being stretched in ways um, in that particular moment um, like I can relate to you to like you know there's been multiple times to where like you felt like you hit rock bottom and the more you grow you hit another new rock bottom and you climb up from there but I remember being in financial calamities and situations to where I'm like looking at the accounts and it's not matching what's due and you know god is able to speak to me and give me an idea and most times when he gives me ideas it's me using my hands and the gifts and talents that he already put in me to create solutions to provide income so i've tr i've he's dealt me with me in that area before to where i can trust him in that right i can trust him to where i can trace him but it was in the area to where like i would never been before it was like the trueness of blind faith and because of my upbringing and the type of household that I was brought up in, I was brought up by Navy SEAL dad, super strict, like, you know, dress right, dress, dependable, make your own way. You know, you have a plan Z, a back, you know, like it, it was very different when I first met God and I had to learn to have faith in him and not in my own work. This is probably where it tested me the most because I'm so used to trying to find a way out of no way. And as I was, you know, saying before, when I got that notice, I was trying to find any kind of way. And in, in all of my efforts failed until I lost everything. Then I had to turn to God. I'm not sure if I would have turned to him then <laughs> when I got that pink slip, if he would have gave me the idea or if, if he had to bring me to that point to really turn to him. But that was the moment to where, like, I knew that I didn't have any ideas because I already tried and I had to seek him. Um, and in that midst, being able to trust him in the unknown of, what, a cleaning business? Do people pay for this? Um, and each level that I grow in, he's constantly trusting my, uh, testing my trust and testing my, my faith. I, I use trust a lot instead of faith because... Um, I like I have faith in God or like, oh yeah, God I see you do it. You can move mountains and make ways out of no ways. But me trusting him is for me personally, it's like the most vulnerable state that I can be in because I know that it's not my work but it's his. And each level that I grow in, he puts me in scenarios to where my efforts cannot get us out and I have to depend on him. But each time it's like it's higher and it's stronger. And I'm like, God, there's like absolutely no way. Like this, this situation is just devastating. Like, I don't, I don't even know if you can do it. Like, let me, let me help you. Let me put my works in it and help you. And he's like, I didn't ask you for your help. Um, so he's just constantly putting me in scenarios to where I have to trust him because he knows me and he knows his daughter and as you know I build up he's like okay I see you're building it up and you can trust me here because you can see me but can you trust me when you can't see me and this is where he deals with me a lot and, and just builds that and stretch me and as uncomfortable as I am in every scenario I have to think of Titus 10 that you know I believe in the peer of the peer and that I have to know that all his intentions for me is pure never to bring harm 
but always to grow me, even if I don't like it. And sometimes I'm not as willing to submit to that, but I know that it's always for my good. And over time, he will tend to bend me down. And then I just fully surrender when I'm like, okay, I tried everything. So, you know, that has been uh, my continual faith and trust journey in him. Wow. You are so incredible. I love your insight. Uh, not too many people, <laughs> yeah, not too many people can, you know, realize that and accept it, that maybe God allow the cars or the chips to fall where they may mm-hmm. that will force you into a position of uncomfortability yes and in that yes, state, yes. you rise i mean mm-hmm. with free will you have a choice either to stay there or to do something about it and you remark exactly you did something about it yeah i know it's, it's so funny you mentioned that because you know um recently within these years of me um stepping out and being stretched in another place how i end up birthing the area of teaching people how to do this business was a whole nother you know hardship of situations um my husband and i you know uh we're just two young black kids you know from the hood my husband's from oakland i'm from compton not really learning financial education and not really understanding how to, how money works and how to best make it work so we're just trying to figure it out we're growing this business and income is coming in we're like honey we need to do something smart with this money and we end up making some bad investments and trusting some really bad people unfortunately and um we lost everything again right and this loss was was tough because we didn't lose the house or the car, but we lost the the income. We, we lost the the actual money that we just built, right? And like the things that we felt proud in, and we lost multiple six figures. And it was in a situation to where like my husband was sick, and we're like, "Don't worry, honey, we'll be able to pull from this." And when we went to pull from this, I'm getting a call from Washington D.C. from you know CDC saying that the money was laundered from a bad investment and I'm sitting there again like God what am I to do <laughs> again in this scenario what am I to do and I'm like I have the cleaning business of being re- rebuilt from after COVID but I'm like it's not enough like we've been living off of that as well and he was like now you need to teach it and I'm like oh no God no way like I'm super shy I like to be in my house I like to run business from my laptop he was like, no, now you go and teach it. And I was like, I can't. Like, I'm too shy. Like, I, I don't even like my voice. I don't want to talk to people. And he just kept saying that, now you need to teach it. I'm like, okay, God. And this is where, you know, that blind faith. I was like, I'll teach a couple of people. I'll teach the people that I know. And after I taught them during COVID and saw the level of success they were able to achieve with the same steps that I put in, he was like now teach it to the masses and I'm like no God like you just told me to teach it and I taught it and in that moment it was me being I felt like the most stretched because it was pulling me so much out of my under my comfort zone and he told me like you are selfish he was like you thought that I put you in that situation just for you but I used that situation so that way people can see that you came out through my grace so now teach them And out of that horrible financial situation that we were placed in again, I ended up birthing the academy. And within a year, being able to triple what we lost, and not only that, being able to go back into this community and teach over 600 people to do the same thing that I'm doing. And this right here is where like God just truly just blew the socks off me. And I was like, okay, God, I trust you. (laughs) I I trust you enough to be uncomfortable in in the test and the purpose that you have placed in me. And it's just so amazing to think that in that scenario, I was I'm just I was being selfish. Like to think that he just thought that could only bring me out when it's meant to bring so many people out. And there's so many stories like that in the Bible. You know, when you think about Moses and you think about, you know, Esther, like God used them and they can be like, oh God, why me? Like you did this for me. And I'm like, no, like I'm, I did this for you, but for others. 
and that is truly how he works and um that's why this is this whole thing has been a faith journey <laughs> absolutely so so the cleaning industry um is growing rapidly uh, i believe it's yes. like 20 percent annual growth rate that's, that's yes. a big boom um, what do yes. you think are some of the key factors driving this demand and, and how can aspiring cleaning business owners tap into this opportunity? Um, you know, the cleaning industry is not going anywhere. Um, it's the more companies that arise, the more businesses that, that come up, the more homes that are developed across the U.S., um, this service is going to continue to be needed and in demand. As long as there are people occupying spaces, those spaces need to be clean. And I don't care how many AIs they create, nobody can clean a baseboard like a human finger can. You know what I mean? Nobody knows to look for the dust on top of the fridge, on top of cabinets, like, you know, somebody with experience does. Um, and there's so many different areas within cleaning. I love residential. That's my sweet spot. But this is a, a $26 billion industry that is has several different levels of, of cleaning services that's needed within commercial, um, post-construction, Airbnb, um, movie sets and film studios. I mean, the list goes on. And like I mentioned, any space where people occupy, it needs to be clean and sanitized. Absolutely. All right, all right. So you, uh, you hosted your first annual virtual conference for cleaning business owners. So congratulations yes. on that. Could you share Thank some, you. Thank you. Could you share some highlights from the event and uh, any key takeaways that participants gain from it? Oh my goodness, the information was so valuable. I partnered with some amazing people throughout this year, um, and I, I called them all and I was like, "Hey, you guys, I want to do this big thing, and I want to teach so many people for free how to do this business." And um, they were all on board, and they came and shared and offered so much value. Um, we had somebody that came and broke down um, government contracts, how to get into the government contract space and get cleaning contracts. And she shared so much insight, like tangible insight from her experience on how to, you know, where to look for them, how to make yourself um, uh, appealing to the government contract. So when they see you, like what type of certificates to apply for to make your um, your bid look even more appeasing, how to figure out, you know, the numbers to put in for your bid. Um, we had our commercial speaker, and he is such a fireball. He just came in and just motivated everybody. And, you know, motivation is awesome, but then he gave them the, the skills to be able to um, find those sweet spots with those clients. And the thing about what separates, you know, uh, some people, you know, putting in commercial bids and others um, is that customer relation. I think sometimes that's a lost art in building tangible in-person relationships. So he gave so much insight on that. I believe that, you know, the right person and the right entrepreneur and go-getter like myself, you know, I Googled and figured it out. And there's a lot of things that you can figure out online for yourself. But the insight that those participants shared with the with the conference attendees was amazing. It's those jewels to where like they're only learned by experience. So people came and learned how to submit government contracts, how to submit commercial contracts, how to, and then I, I did my, my one of my famous speeches and talked about, you know, upsell, um, trying to get your one-time clients into a reoccurring client. That's the best way to build this business. So that way you can have like that dependable reoccurring income. Um, so it was a, a long three day event and we had over 11 speakers um, and it was just, it was just amazing. Like I was so proud of my speakers. Everybody started on time. We had such a large attendees virtual. Um, it was really, really good. Absolutely. And right now you have a three day challenge. Um, yes. How can participants get involved with that? Yes. Um, so I'm having a challenge um, that is starting on next week that is going to be amazing. One of the, 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 like the overall feedback from the conference was, okay, like, hey, Jazz, like, this conference was amazing. Like, I got so much information. It's super amazing. But I need to know now, like, the actual step-by-step -step of how to put these tools and tips and strategies they gave me into play. 
So I was like, okay, so now I'm like thinking of something else. And I'm like, we're going to have a challenge and we're going to have a three day challenge. And I'm going to actually show you guys step by step on how to put those strategies into play um, for your own business. So it's going to be an amazing challenge. People can join online. Um, they can join online at the CEO Cleaning Academy. And I'll definitely give you the link as well. Um, if they're on any of my social platforms, the link is available there. Um, but it's going to be an amazing event. So I'm excited for this. Yes, indeed. All right, all right. Is there anything else that um, you would like to add to this conversation before we let you go? Um, no, but this has been so good. I guess I just want to just piggyback off of your initial um, word of the day of belief. And, you know, the level that I'm at, I've grown so much. And, you know, the current area in my life where I'm de really, really developing is self-belief. Um, because I believe in my talents and I believe in, you know, the things that I've shown to be good at. But sometimes in the back of my mind, I still have doubt. I still have doubt if something's going to work out, if something's going to come into fruition, if something's going to come into pass. And God told me that you can only go as far as you believe. And you can fake belief but that's what your outcome is going to look like. And I've been on this journey of just really true confession and saying and speaking these words and really believing it and allowing my actions to follow it. So I just want to just encourage everybody to check your belief. If you have any doubt, and it's okay. We're human. We go through so much in life, things that tack away at our self-belief, situations that did not come out as we thought they were, and we, we wholeheartedly believed in those and it didn't. But just believe in you. Um, Self-belief is so important as you are trying to pursue entrepreneurship or really anything because you can only go as far as you believe and your actions are only going to match what you believe. And I always say, you know, put your money where your mouth is at. But now I want to say, like, put your money and your effort where your belief is at. Um, Self-belief is like one of those good tools that every person needs in life. Um, because you can't go too far without it. Yes, indeed. All right. So once again, what are those links? Um, they can find us at CL Cleaning Academy. And also you guys can find me on all social platforms by my name, Jasmine Tate. And you'll be able to find the direct link to get access to the challenge. So you can get into the challenge and also a super amazing giveaway that we're doing as well with multiple winners. We're giving away over $800 worth of prizes. So I'm, I'm super excited for that as well. And you guys get all those links on my social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and also please join our Facebook group. You can find it at CEO Cleaning Academy. It's a free Facebook group full of 4,000 entrepreneurs that's all on the same path to do the same thing as you do. And there's something about proximity and being in a community of individuals that understand the process. So, yes, you can find us on all those outlets. All right, all right. Listeners, just in case you didn't get those links, no worries. I will have them in the description of this episode and in the show notes. So all you guys have to do is just click the links. Well, Jasmine, I want to thank you so much for being our guest this morning. It was truly an honor. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Take care. Have a great morning. You as well. Bye. Bye. Rotella Resale, your premier collectibles, toys, and novelty retailer. Find the best and hard-to-find die-cast vehicles and action figures. Some of the most popular vinyl LPs, Zippo lighters, and comics. Support the best artists with our rock t-shirts and posters. You will find so much more at RotellaResale.com with free shipping on U.S. orders. Use promo code RADIO for 10% off your order. Visit RotellaResale.com. That is R-O-T-E-L-L-A R-E-S-A-L-E dot com. Thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio Live. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab it from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, Spotify, CastBox, iHeart Radio, iTunes, YouTube, the app Podcast Addict, or over at our website, 
which again is onlyonemediagroup.com and that goes for every single show that we've ever aired if you like to request music or send something for me to play email it to v radio at onlyonemediagroup.com that is v as in victor and here's my disclaimer we are genre free we do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts alone and actually scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right that's the bottom line this is my show so deal with it <laughs> just kidding on behalf of myself denny i appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us spread the word because sharing is caring we stuffed up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show be sure to connect with me on facebook twitter instagram tumblr snapchat tiktok at all social media sites as well as spreaker youtube we always follow back okay well just remember to put yourself into everything that you do and never stop investing in yourself peace love grilled cheese and talk with you later You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a seventh sign regime, Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate exclusive.